Hey, what's up? It's Micah from The Common Sense Show. So you want to start a business, but you don't know where to start and how to do it and what business to start. I'm going to talk about five things that you need to know about setting up your business, launching it, and how to choose which business to start. Welcome to our new segment, 15-Minute Business University. I'm Micah Logan, and we're getting your business going on The Common Sense Show. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Let's dive right into the show. So I want to talk today about five things you need to know when you're trying to start trying to launch your business. Here we go. So the first thing that you want to do when you're trying to start your business is you want to ask yourself, what is it that you do well, better than anyone else? Far too many people believe that you need a sophisticated business, especially nowadays to start. You really don't. Um, if you're the best floor waxer in your town, you're the best at hanging pictures, putting up televisions, it doesn't matter what the business is. What matters more is that you create some business that can generate serious cash. So the first thing in identifying which business to start is identifying what it is that you're good at what it is that you yourself actually do better than anyone else that you know of. Second, have you made a product or performed a service for someone in the past that they've really enjoyed that you've provided? And did you like doing it? Did you like performing that service or creating that product? These are things to think about when it comes to starting your business and identifying which business to start. The third thing is use that product or service that you do really well and launch us what we call a soft test. The soft test is a way for you to figure out if people actually are attracted to this idea, this product or service. And you want to test it at least three times so that people who are consuming that product, buying that product or using that service that you provide actually are are connected to it and that you actually have the right the right thing in mind for this business idea. Um, so this is how you funnel your business or your interest into something that can actually form a business. So many people go from, I have this idea, I want to drive around and give poodles fades in the back of a van. Okay, how many people use fade their poodle, right? And what's the expense going to be when it comes to that and and how do you interact with dogs and you don't even own a dog and yet you want to fade poodles. These are the things that you have to think about when it's, when it's time to like launch and start your business. So identify which, what business you want to start by first identifying what you're good at. Second, have you made a product to perform a service that people said, Hey, you're actually good at that. And third, if you do it really, really well, test it at least three times. The second thing you do after you have, have identified this idea of a product or service is that you want to research and you want to test it. Once you've narrowed down your business idea that you want to research, that you've researched, um, you want to go launch into a research portion, uh, the research portion of your your business idea to see how many businesses in your area are already doing what you want to do, and where in your area do they actually do it. I want you to note though that just because there are businesses that may already do what you do, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't open a business that's a like business. And the reason for that is when you have more than one business in an area that actually does similar things or the same thing, depending on what you do, then it actually serves to validate that industry or that business more so because people are actually consuming it on a regular basis. So you shouldn't see it as I need to come in here and be completely different and reinvent the wheel. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. Well, you can do that, 
but it might take you more time to validate in the marketplace what your idea is. What you want to do is you want to say, hey, I have this idea. It looks like a couple other people are doing it. I do it a little differently. And you market to that difference and why you're different. And it will serve that in that area that you're trying to actually launch in that you there's some validation and some traction for the idea that you actually have. Um, if you have a new twist on the same kind of business that exists, then you need to figure out who that target avatar is. And I'm going to make a video talking about how to create a target avatar uh, and a customer. So you'll be able to understand that, too, in one of these 15 minute business university uh, clips. And so if you are going to figure out who your customer avatar is, it's who is the person that is purchasing the product or the service and ask yourself, where do these people come from? What exactly do they buy? Why do they buy what they buy? Do they buy what they buy more than one time? Is there anything that they would suggest that you can do to actually improve your product or service? And finally, would they recommend your product or your service to a family or friend? These are all questions that you need to ask when you're trying to come up with a perfect customer avatar. And of course, there are a bunch of other things in determining who exactly is going to be the one who actually buys your product or uses your service. But this is the start. This is a great start. And you need to test, test, test. So let's talk about getting your business set up, which is the number three thing that you need to do. You're going to need to establish a business plan. No, you don't need a business degree to establish your business plan and to put a, a business plan together. You just have to be patient. That's it. Just patiently sit down and think down the road. And we all do this. So if you were a person that said, hey, you know, I want to get married one day or I want to have kids or I can see myself going on this trip. You have already done part of what, what I'm asking you to do for a business plan. You've sat down, you've thought about the future, you've thought about specifically what you want to do, where you want to do it. The only thing that's missing is you either having the money, the resources, or the time to be able to actually accomplish it. So the business plan is the same thing. You think about how you want to bring your business to market. Fundamentally, your business plan needs to include some fundamental business information, like which customers do you plan to target? Well, we talked about that in our last point in research and target. How much money is it going to take to actually start the business? And where's that money going to come from? What do you think that you can charge for the product or service that you're planning to launch in the marketplace? What are your competitors charging? What are customers paying in your area? And what exactly have people purchased that product or that service from you in the past? How many customers do you need to sell in order to replace your income? Side hustles are great, but if you're looking to actually be on your own and be a business owner, what you need to do is think about how much money you need to bring in at the top. Let's call it, let's do an example. You need to bring in $1,000. You know, in order to deliver the service and to pay all the expenses related to your business insurance, taxes, fees, utilities, whatever, it's going to cost $500. At the end of this transaction, there's a $500 left over. That $500 left over will replace your income. Okay, so what is it that you need to charge up here and to, to earn so that after expenses, you have enough money to replace your income at the bottom end? How are you going to market your business? What is your full marketing plan going to be? How much cash are you going to need to save for the next six months so that you're not looking over your shoulder when business, when uh, bills are due? These are all important questions that should go into your business plan. The number four thing you want to think about when you're trying to set up and launch your business is the logistics of your new business. So let's talk about what you need to do. So after you have your idea, you've created your business plan, you know who your customer avatar is. Now you want to go to your local city or town clerk's office and pay a small fee to get your business license with the city or the town. You're going to talk to an insurance company and see if there's any type of insurance product you need, liability, errors and omissions for advertising, things like this. You want to take that new business license, go to a bank, open up a business account to keep your business money and your personal money separate. And then you want to make sure you have a logo created that represents your brand <clears throat> that you're creating 
and you want to write down a brand promise. Now, your brand promise is what your business will deliver to the marketplace. That's what your brand promise is. Then after you write down your brand promise, you next want to create marketing materials, business cards, signs, and a website that all align with your brand promise. All the visual displays on all those marketing things basically show an illustration of what you're promising the public that you're going to deliver to the public. And the number five thing is obvious. Launch a business. You don't want to move too fast when you're doing this, of course, but you don't want to move too slow either. Now, I have a just a few words of wisdom from my experience as a business owner. Okay, so my experience as a business owner has taught me that discouragement will happen. And setting up a business is a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. So if you have the patience and the grit that it takes to be successful, they've measured what takes what a successful entrepreneur actually looks like. And it's not intelligence. It's not necessarily money. It is grit. It is your ability to be resilient. It's your ability to come back from things when they happen to you and to be stronger for it in the long run. So there's a few tips that I've learned, lessons learned that I have for running a business over the last 20 years. So the first one is you want to create a strong network that is supportive and well-connected. Your network is your net worth. The people who you are surrounded by are ultimately the people will help you get your business into the marketplace and into the minds of consumers, and they'll tell other people about it, and that is so important and critical for you. Read, read, read. Don't stop reading. Learning about business strategy and and business building topics. There are free books at the library that you can read, a million of them on business. Amazon also delivers very cheap book, even used ones for like four bucks to your doorstep. Read as much as you can from people who have been successful in business. You want to always monitor your numbers of your business to stay ahead of the trends in your business, whether the trends are good or bad. But the point is that you can correct them, whether they're good or bad. You have the ability to actually correct what happens if it's bad um, and is moving your business off target. You have the ability to actually correct it or If it's good, you have the ability to do more of what works. You want to find a business coach. This actually is a thing now. It wasn't a thing back when I started, but it is now. Um, Someone who's experienced in business and who has the success in business that may be operationally in their business ahead of you. So they don't have to have like 10 years of business experience, but maybe it's someone who's just the next level up from you who can teach you how to survive the, the previous level that you're at right now. And don't be afraid if you fail. Failure leads to learning. And learning is what makes you better as an entrepreneur. Ask anyone who's been in business for over 10 years. We've all failed, but we've all learned. Don't let those failures stop you from bouncing back. We're not special or superhuman. We're just resilient. That's it. That's all we are. We're people who survive the ups and downs, the roller coaster of being an entrepreneur. And we decided that we were going to learn the lesson at the end of the day. That's what it means to be a successful entrepreneur and to actually continue to make an impact on the consumer market. All right. So that's a wrap for today's episode of The Common Sense Show. Thanks for listening. And thank you for joining me today. If you have questions about starting or launching a business, you can email me at info at the common sense podcast. Dot com has a banner right here for you. Um, you can connect with the show at the Common Sense Podcast on Instagram, or tweet at us at Sense Podcast, or you can catch me on Instagram at Michael Logan, the number one at Michael Logan, the number one, um, and that's where you can actually find us. Make sure you like this video and subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, or if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts. Wherever you listen to your podcast, make sure you subscribe for new 15-minute business universities. If you haven't joined our Patreon community yet, there will be a link in the description of this video to do so. And by joining our Patreon community, you'll get access to a live Q&A with me once a month. You'll gain access to podcast episodes earlier, and you'll get access to our free Facebook community as well. Until next time, if you don't spend time building your dreams, 
you'll spend time building someone else's dreams instead. I'm out of here. <laughs>